What's up, everyone? How you doing? Happy Friday. Thanks for the the big sub, Poppy. That's dope. Uh, welcome to our new followers. Thanks for the follow, Mary. Uh, today's a really big uh, phone a friend of Friday. Before we get into it, uh, how's everyone doing? I'm going to have some coffee. Like my third coffee of the day. Got the new intro screen. Um, broadcasting from LA, as usual. Actually, next we might switch it up next week, though. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, so we've got a um, special guest today on the call, Pete Doherty, uh, Moon Boots. Did I get a new webcam? No, I just um, I upped my uh, I upped the um, the bit the bit rate because my connection is more stable now. So I'm like plug right into the modem. Um, but yeah, it's the same one. I just have a little, a little better. I know we're very slowly, right? After like two, three months of this. <laughs> so hopefully, yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll go smooth today. Uh, Moon Boots is gonna be joining us. Um, he, he is, you know, sort of a legend in the scene. He uh, came from um, French Express and started over there and we'll talk about that a little bit and now um just drop his second album on anjuna deep uh we did have to uh record this right before right before i jumped on here because he had to travel today but uh we're still going to go through through the demos um welcome everyone jumping in here let me just pull up my uh my stream manager um but yeah so if you if you're not familiar with moon boots go check them out check out the new record um epic remixes for like uh shoot everyone now rogers bond x um he's you know incredible sample uh sample wizard and keys player um and then if you've been lucky enough to see his band the full band which i haven't yet um that's a huge show so um check out those some of those performances i think are, are maybe on youtube I was just looking at one uh, of his show at KCRW, which was really cool. Um, what's your favorite Moon Boots song? Mine, based on play, you know, that's a tough one. Um, I'm a big fan of the early stuff. I like Love Strong from that era. Red Sky is up there. I think he uh, went pretty in on that. And actually, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit. But, um, yeah, what 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 are your favorite Moon Boot songs? Like post them in the chat. Um, I guess everyone's kind of in here, and they'll continue to join us. But uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so uh, welcome Moon Boots on the call. How's it going, Pete? Hey, Pat. How you doing, man? I'm all right. Yeah. Where are you right now? I'm in Brooklyn. At home. In the, um, in well, actually, I'm not at home. Home. But Brooklyn is home. I am at my studio, which is the second home. Have you been in the studio since all of this stuff started happening, or what have you been up to? Um, yeah, I've been here a fair amount. Um, but especially early on, uh, when like you know we couldn't leave and um, things were pretty intense in in New York. Of course, you know like the first uh, couple right. months of the pandemic. Um, but, uh, since then, and since like the summer hit, I've been trying to get out of town as much as I can during the weekends. Um, not going anywhere fancy really, but like going to friends, visit friends, family, my wife's family, stuff like that. Um, just cause like summer in New York can be kind of brutal and it's just a good time to, right. to chill a bit, you know? Yeah. Would you be able to turn your mic up just a little bit? Um, I could try. Let's see. Uh, Let me move this. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear while you're getting that sorted that um, things have improved over there. Because I remember, I mean, I think we were all watching and hearing the, the stories, friends with family and a lot of scares. And it seems like you guys have really turned it around and are sort of like the model for big cities in, in America now. Yeah, I still don't know how that happened, man. <laughs> I'm just glad right. it's not where it was. 
Um, knock on wood, right? Um, we're still, uh, uh, as much as, you know, we all want this to be over, it's just, um, it's not going to be over anytime soon, right? So how about yeah. you, man? How have you been holding up? I've been good, man. I've, I mean, I've been just, you know, living like the rest of, like everyone else, just trying to stay safe. Um, I'm really thankful that my family and friends have been well uh, mm-hmm. and yeah. hold up here in L.A., you know, just writing and, you know, doing, uh, trying out the streaming thing, which is a good excuse to chat to the homies like yourself and uh, on a weekly basis and kind of check in and um, see how everyone's sort of like doing amidst all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel really thankful, I think, for the ability to... I guess like, you know, work remotely and um, not have to like go into a really busy area like so many people might have to do, you know, to pay the rent. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm curious, like uh, you you mentioned earlier before we jumped on that you're finishing up some new stuff. First off, I guess let's talk about you. You know, you have a new you got the new album and you just dropped the remix record with some really big names on that. So congrats. Thank you. Did you select all the remixers personally? Just about all of them. A couple of them were um, actually really only kind of one of them was like a suggestion from the label. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was this girl, Soella, who it turns out also is um, she's about to release on Anjuna Deep. So it was a good fit. And I wanted to um, to find a good um, because they really give me free reign. And mm-hmm. um, I want to, there's always, you know, if I have a chance to do a remix, I'm like, okay, I want to do a couple of things that will, um, you know, appeal kind of down the middle to like the Anjuna Deep, um, you know, core fan group. But sure. um, they really have been um, like super open-minded about what they want to listen to and everything. And so it's, I give him Kenny Dope, give him Mark Broom, all this stuff that's just like, you Ooh. know, completely um, house and techno and heavy. And, and um, not only is the label open to it, but like everyone is. And it's just nice. So, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, basically yeah, picked out all the remixers. Um, There's a couple of times where, you know, you get someone and I'm not going to name any names, mm. but then um, a month goes by or two months go by and you're like, mm, are they actually going to do this right. thing or not? And then you have to kind of pull the plug. So it took a while. Um, and uh, when you're doing that many remixes of that many songs, um, it's never going to be like completely um, smooth sailing the whole way. Mm-hmm. So there are some that uh, have been finished for, um, you know, quite a few months since like before quarantine even. And then others, which were like, um, you know, deadline was two weeks ago. We need it now. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so, you know how it is. Yeah, you're taking, uh, but like, it turned out great, bounce. man. It all turned out great. So, yeah, they yeah. sound the ones that I've heard. I know you sent me the Kenny Dope one pretty early on, and I was, you know, just blown away. Um, what a legend! And that must be pretty exciting to get some of these giants, probably um, idols. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah <laughs> on your stuff. did you hear the um the uh i keep wanting to call it classics but it's not classics it's tyler from classics um check that one out man it's Ty- uh, what's what's it um what's the what's the artist name well so tyler has a new project he just started and it's called oceans 1985 okay so it's um the the he remixed a song called jumpin Got which it. is on the record and uh yeah, it's um, it's wild. It's got a lot of like the drums are sort of like Carly Simon Y hmm. classic, um, and he had a percussionist who I don't know, I don't know who this friend is, but he said he had a percussionist play on it who's a friend of his who plays in David Byrne's live band. Okay, um, wow. And so it's got really nice percussion on it it's got like a slap bass part it's got some uh synth stabs that are kind of like um when i hear there's this one part that sounds like um i keep forgetting by michael mcdonald which 
I love that song. Um, so, uh, but yeah, that's just Tyler's remix, and um, and he did a really nice job. It sounds like I think you'd like it. Yeah, you yeah. know this remix inside out. You can recognize where every sound is 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 from. And I mean, I guess that's sort of a segue. I mean, you've been doing how long has it been since you started the Moon Boots project? Um, I started it in, ten years ago. Wow! Congrats. Yeah. Uh, thanks, man. I think that's probably when we first got in touch on the on the mustache. Yeah, on the old internet chats. Uh, I remember, I think you posted the first couple of demos or tracks. They were uh, slower. There was like maybe, a, I don't know if Aretha was in there. But that was in that first batch or shortly after. Yeah. But uh, On My Mind and um, was, yeah, sort of that kind of year. And so, I mean, let's, yeah, let's zoom out for a second. So this is your second full length uh, remix album and then you know the first one which is now a classic first landing also and Juno deep and, and it? <laughs> hey man that's, i'm here to just you know <laughs> that's what we're yeah here yeah why not pump the tires no but i mean it's 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 terrific actually that might have been the last time i saw you was when you played um i don't think you saw me it was either when you played at day trip which was like the week after i played or but i came to exchange with Goldroom and watched you um we were on top of your of your DJ set at, at Exchange, and that might have been like a year. Oh, and a half that's ago. right. Yeah, I forgot you guys were there. Well, Exchange is so huge. That was a great. Oh, no, I mean, we, yeah, we didn't see you yeah. that night, but we we but you know we were right on top of your whole set, and that was, you know, um, a really epic time. But let's talk about, oh, I guess, you. Uh, you know, you see, so you so you came up uh, with French Express, uh, and let's talk about like your so what, what was the shift um sonically and like musically you know going from though that era to uh i guess the, you know releasing full-length albums with engine deep what was your approach what's changed um well you know i did uh i i came up with french express and and those tracks were um uh all the tracks that I released with French Express were um, based around vocal samples. So either things that, you know, were just acapellas mm -hmm. or things that I found um, like Aretha or Go For It or, I'd, you know, some songs where I find um, not exactly acapellas, but like um, you find a section of a song that happens to be acapella mm -hmm. and use that as a sample. Um, and so... Uh, but you know, basically it was just it was me and 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 vocal samples and not doing features and not collaborating, um, and uh, and with uh, the first release that I ended up putting out on Anjuna Deep, but that wasn't like the goal. I just started it and um, it was a track called Red Sky, mm -hmm. and I uh, I started it. Um, thinking it would be like a full on vocal feature. Um, but then I was just one day I was like playing around with it and I was like, man, I don't think the verse chorus um, format really works. It's just, I'm getting a little bored. Um, I want to do something different. So I just sort of did things that I kind of done in remixes before and chopping out vowel sounds and making um, the you know using the vocal sampler as kind of like a lead instrument instead of having a lead vocal um and uh and in a style that i could tell would kind of work with anjuna deep who i i'd played with at miami music week um and i was friendly with those guys and actually lane eight um early on and in, in you know that project for daniel he released on french express mm -hmm. which um uh it's kind of crazy when you see what, you know, it's, it's uh, where his career has gone. It's pretty wild mm -hmm. um, that I think, and that was one of his first releases. And he was friends with um, Isaac Tischauer, who was uh, my label mate and uh, actually my roommate for a little bit okay. um, when we lived together in Berlin. Um, but yeah, so, you know, things kind of evolved and, and French Express, it, it wasn't releasing music anymore. There'd been kind of, I don't know, some drama and um, uh, not with me, but it was, uh, 
there was a track on the label, not by me, that became sort of a crossover hit, and mm -hmm. um, it didn't. Uh, um, I don't know if I should get into this. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> I can cut but, stuff. Um, we can <laughs> give us the sauce uh, if you it, feel like it, it. It sucked. It was it was annoying. It was a bummer. Right. Um, and uh, but I started. You know, I released one song with Anjuna Deep, and then I I changed management and my new management, who I've had since. Um, they started to push. You know, the idea of making an album on me, which I was resistant to at first, but mm -hmm. then. I started putting, I realized it gave me a chance to not just think about um, uh, club singles and, and just making tracks for my DJ sets, which yep. is what I've been doing, you know, basically up until that point. Yeah. Um, whether those DJ sets were, you know, when I was starting out, I was uh, DJing at um, a hotel bar and uh, like a restaurant bar in Chicago, mm -hmm. like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, every week and um, until I started to get gigs and then I'd like find subs for those days and yeah. stuff. Um, but I think that's part of the reason why um, a lot of my first music was like very chill and kind of like night opening kind of stuff is because mm -hmm. like that's where I would test it out. You know, I wasn't making banging house tracks right. to play at the... Uh, the you know the hotel bar or, or the whatever you know river north chicago bar right um so anyways um where was i going with that oh yeah so the albums just gave me a chance to like make a bunch of different styles of music and and collaborate with new people and and keep it fresh you know and not just think about making only club music can um, you just describe the transition from you know, you're working with samples, which means you can kind of do whatever you want with this finished body. Um, I like, I love that you mentioned "Go for It," uh, by the way, which is one of the slept on. Like with your early stuff, you were sampling not just big, well-known songs, and then you were like, "Does anyone know this?" And then you you let out that it was from uh, an '80s movie. I don't. I think it's okay to talk Caddy about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna come after you. Caddyshack. Caddyshack, yeah. right? And yeah. I was like, "Wow, really?" So I still have to go find. Um, yeah. You just went in and, and took this, and that's one of my uh, favorite early joints from you. So I think that that shows uh, your affinity for, for digging deep, and, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, had you been doing sort of sessions, or had you worked with uh, work with songwriters much to that point, or was that uh, with First Landing, your, your introduction to figuring out how that was going to go? Um. Well, you know, I played in a band before I started doing Moon Boots. And so right. um, I came into that uh, really hungry and learning everything I could about production. Um, the guys uh, I played with, uh, um, the name of the band was Hey Champ. And mm -hmm. I knew how to kind of write. And I knew, I, you know, I was figuring out how to put chords together and I was really into you know I'd been into synthesizers for a long time and that was sort of really where I kind of dove into the sort of deeper world of music was just from from goofing around on synthesizers <laughs> <laughs> and um and piano of course but and you studied uh, piano a little bit yeah. right yeah yeah no I studied a, a lot um <laughs> uh classical uh jazz I played jazz um, uh, pretty poorly, like, you know, for like two years. And then two years where I was playing a lot, like three, you know, three hours a day, a Ooh. lot of a lot of the time. And so I got pretty good for two years. And then I, I was playing in college at the uh, jazz ensemble. And then I kind of had like a falling out with the jazz instructor. Um, which is long story, not worth getting into, right. but, um, it's all good. I think it's the best thing that like, I didn't, it, it got me more into DJing and electronic music and it freed up a lot of time for me to, um, cause when you're, you know, if you're, if you're really focused on being an instrumentalist, it's tough to, to balance and, very, and, very you know, much. find the right, the time to, to write and produce and do all the you know, 
stuff you need to learn, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to make songs and produce songs. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it all worked out for the best. But with the band, I didn't really know songwriting and how to kind of produce vocals and or produce drums. Um, but I learned that from like doing sessions with them and, you know, we made an album together. And, um, and so that's where I started to learn about songwriting and really learn kind of arrangement and sort of pop. Um, right. Uh, you collaboration know, it wasn't new yeah, to you collaboration writing and all that point. stuff uh and that's what i you know put to use later on the on uh first landing which really was like um and i'm still not to this day i'm not like a lyricist but mm -hmm. i think that you know my skill with that comes with like uh developing an idea that like like i'll have the instrumental and uh, the singer will have, you know, maybe the, the germ of an idea. Or in some cases, they come with lyrics just ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and that's great, too. Um, but sometimes it's just like, okay, I've got this idea of a couple phrases. And then we can kind of write a song on the spot from there. So um, that's, that's the way I like to do it, you know? So do you do a combination of... If someone's coming by, like a Nick Hansen, being like, yeah. "Oh, I have a couple of two-minute beats," or or will you start? Uh, will you are you equally happy to start just like playing the piano and seeing where it goes? Usually, I'll play him something. I'll play him a demo. Yeah. Um, instead of. Yeah. Because I actually only recent, I mean, only relatively recently did I have a piano in the studio. And it's not a... a <laughs> How's that possible? I have, like, I have a Korg SV-1 and I used to keep that at home. Right. But yeah, uh, now I've got it in the studio and I have a different electric piano at home. But uh, but yeah, no, it's usually... Um, you I'll like play to play it. a few ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think that probably keeps it uh, focused. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's talk about some of because I know that uh, speaking of some of your excellent collaborators, you've brought a lot of them. Maybe everyone from First Landing, like on the, on the road. I saw. I didn't unfortunately get to see the full show back when there were shows. But you sort of really yeah. elevated. You started. Did you just go from DJ from DJ sets into actually no? We I ran into you at Splash House when you were first trying out. Um, sort of hybrid sets, which got me to thinking about because you had brought your fancy, I don't know what yeah. keyboard it was out there. That, and, that's the SP1, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. SP1. And yeah. yeah, can you talk about that evolution into what your, you know, the, the big shows that you guys were doing? Um, yeah, no, those were, um, it's funny because when I started doing that, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to keep doing this. This is great. And then it's such a pain. Um, what was the, the, the hybrid the, set? The piano weighs, uh, I, you can't bring anything over 70 pounds mm -hmm. or you get killed with, uh, and yeah. so the piano in its case weighed 69 pounds and I brought it to like 10 shows. I had the case specially made so that it would be just under. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, and, uh, but I just, I love the way this piano sounds and I wouldn't want to like backline like a, you know, a phantom or something like mm. that, which maybe would be smarter, but oh well. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, um, yeah, so that was a, yeah, that was a start just to, you know, think of my, you know, start playing keyboards again. You know, that was really where that was going. But then the live show itself is, um, is a whole other animal. Um, How many uh, players do you have? And I know you have multiple vocalists sometimes. Or all the time, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I have three players, and I have four different singers. Three players, including myself. Um, but it's a... Uh, there's a lot of... Um, I did a lot of programming, and I learned a lot of... Um, I don't know, just... Uh, Re-engineering sounds, and... and uh, right. Um, so I use Logic to produce, but I use Ableton for the live show. Right. And so... Just really getting in there, programming all of the different CCs and NRPNs and all this crazy stuff. So when I'm 
all be playing a part and then two of the other synthesizers will be um so there's this little um sound like piped in from the laptop as possible there's a couple things okay the more i do it the less comes out of the laptop okay and the more is is programmed and sequenced and all that stuff right. so so you bring do you bring a drummer or drummer yeah and then and then drummer our mutual and friend ross, ross. ross of course yeah um the legend. and the ross to play bass um and when he's not playing bass then the bass is being sequenced uh and he'll be playing guitar over it um right. or yeah so um and dustin the drummer has a um uh but we're actually moving dustin more towards just using the regular kit but using a um or we were before all this was he sort of spd a lot of like electronic uh triggering yeah samples? we were doing but, but i've kind of i was in the process of kind of moving him away from spd okay because uh it's really there's it's just unless you're a very specific kind of drummer um it's there's just no um he's just so used to playing on a regular kit that uh i don't know just playing the electronic drum kit it's so unforgiving you know what i mean right whereas like you can get a feel going on a drum kit that that makes sense and if you just played in all the samples it would sound weird or it sound off that's, um, that's really interesting because you're now the basically md for your own and... show what's that i mean oh yeah yeah it's, it's, it sounds like a lot of work i mean i have an idea just from doing one person live sets for a little for like a year and i was like man the stress of all the gear and the getting all the di's checked and having a line check or sometimes not even if you're right before opening when i was touring with han but so do you like do you miss do you miss miss it? The oh stress, man, that was it was so stressful sometimes. Oh my god. But in the last two shows we brought a keyboard tech finally because I uh I called up my manager and I was like, dude, like I can't I can't load in, load out, sign merch, um, run the show, do whatever like press stuff and like like just be like working nonstop four hours of sleep night after night it was just it was too crazy um and uh i don't know man i mean i do miss it because we were going to do some really cool shows this year and i'm you know i'm hoping i still think it's going to happen next year mm -hmm. um where um Cause that's the goal, right? Especially with like a big show like that. I mean, we were just breaking even the first two tours. So this yep. would have been the first tour where we <laughs> right. didn't break even. Um, but uh, this summer would have been um, as a, as a live group. Um, but uh, yeah, man, um, I do every time, you know, I did that and I did two live tours. Um, I was like, by the end of it, I was like, man, I can't wait to DJ again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did that so. new. So, I mean, I, I don't want to skip over that, that three tracker that you put out also recently, which is cool. A bit of it seems like a bit of a return to uh, uh, yes. doing club stuff. Um, is that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk about that for for a second? Sure. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't want to sound like the albums aren't, you know, club oriented. It's just also it's not just about that. Um and so, uh, yeah, that was the first in a, um, uh, I'm actually working on number two now. Uh, I've been working on it and there's one track that's been really tricky, um, but I'm almost there on it. Um, but yeah, that's a, um, a new, just sort of avenue for me to self-release music, which I think is good, especially now um, to, to get music directly to fans and to not have to, um, I don't know, man, it's especially after doing two albums and, um, just felt right to do something more kind of straightforward and just me get music to my fans, pay what you want on Bandcamp, basically, yeah. you know, um, and, uh, 
and so far so good there. I think that's uh, really nice to have that flexibility, the agility to like you know drop. Obviously, keep your keep your fans happy, and they want to hear. You know, some people I imagine ask you, but like you know, can you give us some of the old stuff? Or there's always someone that wants something that you're not doing exactly at that moment. But some that doesn't mean to me at least that it isn't that you don't want to do that. Is there's only so many hours in the day, and talking about the live show and all the collabs and all the things that go in into putting out your second full length and the remix album. Uh, mm-hmm. It seems like it's a little, maybe a little less stress. You can just write it, you know, you put it up and you're like, cool, like here it is. Yeah, exactly. It's not, you know, you don't finish it and then you're like, okay, this is going to come out in five months. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. great. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, like the early days um, of, uh, the early days of SoundCloud and Hype Machine. I've, I, I feel like you told a story. I feel like maybe it was on another interview or something that you were doing where, what remix was it? It was a big remix for you. Was it Bondax or someone where you were just like, you crushed it in like a weekend and then it was like gone? Like And I'll- then, oh, and then I, oh, and I finished it. Mm-hmm. Um, was it Bondax? I did that. They gave me very little time on that one. <laughs> I think it was three or four days. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That one, yeah, that, that's right. God, I forgot about that. Good memory. How many remixes um, do you think you It done? wasn't two days. It wasn't two days, but it was like way less than a week. And I was like, are you freaking serious? It's stressful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, that one worked out for sure. Um, I, I'll, yeah, I'll say. Yeah. Um, I, I know you're short on time because you're, you're traveling uh, yeah. today. Um, before we get into like a couple of these demos here in our speed round, um, I want to ask you about like, so what are your, what, you know, what's your plan for the next, uh, little bit? It sounds like you've got that second, is it that second sort of, um, EP of, do you have an, like a, a title, is it like a different series? Pure like Moons. Camp series? Pure Moons is what it's called. So uh, one more time. I don't know if you grew up with this in Canada, but, um. <laughs> It's based off of um, this, uh, I'm, I'm sure you did, I'm just kidding. But, um, or if you saw these commercials growing up. Oh, we didn't but, have TV um, in Canada. That's right, I forget. <laughs> I always forget. You can only watch Canadian TV. Yeah, right? exactly, CBC. <laughs> <laughs> they run everything through subtitles. We only got the CBC, that's it. <laughs> um, but... Uh, it's called, uh, it's, there was these infomercials when I was growing up uh, of new age music called Pure Moods. Okay. And uh, it was like really popular series and the commercials were so funny. Um, and so I thought about, um, I was like, let me just steal a little thing from that and call it Pure Moons. Uh-huh. So that's, that's the name of the series. So I've had Pure Moons Volume 1. Nice. And Volume 2 is almost done. Um I have a couple other tracks I might do as number three or something else. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But um, that has been like a fun, yeah, little outlet. Um, and all that music is, uh, if you want to buy it, it's on Bandcamp. Um, and for streaming, it's, you know, everywhere too. So Yeah, Bandcamp will be dropping links to that in the chat. I, I have to say that I'm a little envious because... I've been thinking about, you know, that sort of second series of things that are just, whether it's just for my own DJ sets or things that don't necessarily fit into, you know, that album format. And mm-hmm. uh, it must be, it must feel nice because then, you, you know, when you're writing something, you're, you don't have to worry so much. You're like, okay, if this is going to feel better as six or seven minutes, cool. It doesn't, it's not going to waste away on my hard drive. Um, yeah. It'll see the world. But um before, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. La- last thing before we get to the speed round, uh, you know, so we were last on the road together. It feels like a long time ago, but I don't think it was that. I think it was 2018 when we were in Japan together. Uh, I think it was August too, right? Wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. It was hot, wasn't it? Yeah. We went. I we, think it was August too. We pigged out on sushi and mm-hmm. uh, as you would, as you would. Do we do... As you should, yeah. Os- did we do Osaka? We did. We did both Osaka and Tokyo, Sound Museum mm-hmm. Vision. Yeah, and uh, which were great shows. You've been to Asia and around the world a, a few times. What um, 
what is what would you say is your favorite we'll keep it on, on brand your favorite like japanese experience or like thing to do thing that you've done while outside of the shows um i liked well when we were there together um we went to that arcade that was fun i wanted to do more of that arcade oh the vr, the VR yeah arcade? yeah yeah the well, it was also we, like we a didn't giant arcade at all. with all the video games and stuff. Yeah, that yeah. Was cool. it was... I was like, man, I, I wish you'd spent the whole freaking day here. Right. Um, and then there was another time I went to, the previous time I'd been to Japan, uh, my friend's brother was living out there, and he took me out to karaoke one night, and that was hilarious. Um, like the big, like the full room or private booth like private? It, was, it was private it wasn't like us and a bunch of strangers but it was like you know like uh four of us or five of us or something like i oh, know six of us that's right um and uh that was funny what did you say yeah. what do you sing at karaoke um you what did i sing uh probably space oddity david bowie <laughs> yeah um what else did I do? Man, I can't remember. This was a while ago. Um, but been, sometimes I like to do like Genesis. Ooh, I like okay. to do like old like rock, you know? Yeah, yeah um, you are a like rock. Stuff even like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep it on brand. Um, yeah, I can't remember. Maybe so you're like not Caribbean doing like the R&B. <laughs> you're, not, you're not hitting us with like the Janet or like the... Uh, Melba Moore or like Evelyn Champagne King or anything. <laughs> no, a little no. different from like I, try, your, your, your I don't sing. Um, I try and sing, you know, male songs. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to do that next but, time. Uh, next time we get the chance. Yeah, that's always a bit more appropriate. <laughs> my vocal range as it is. Right. Um, that's no. Yeah. Um, Let's that. jump into these tracks. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So before we, before we do that, real quick, this is uh, the speed round. You don't have to think about it. Just first thing that comes comes to mind. So you've lived in two of the big food cities, known for pizza, uh, Chicago and New York. Currently, where do you go for the best slice of pizza? Anywhere. One slice. I I go to go and just I go to Brooklyn. I, I get it in New York, yeah. Is there one place? Just, just, just. There's a couple different spots. My favorite is down the block. It's called La Industry. It's not like a super well known, but it's like well known in the neighborhood. Industry so. in Brooklyn. La Industry. The yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, speed round number two. What's your favorite sample ever? Not yours particularly, but a sample. Um. I think, uh, what's that? Oh, my God. The Peach Boys, the New York City Peach Boys track that's always um, starts with the hand claps. Um, oh. It's been sampled like a million times. And you always hear, like, whenever I'll hear, like, old school house sets, I'll hear samples of, like, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of the song right now. Um the big New York City Peach Boys, P E E C H. Um, I'm looking that up. I recognize it almost, I think, from your clapping, which is really funny. Yeah, that's how it starts. <laughs> got, 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 got. Um, yeah. All right. It's like a link drum with echo on it or something. It's so um, obscure that you even forget like the original source, which is kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. how it is in this industry. Um, or like the first choice acapellas or like, really classic like player and. Um, uh, let no man put asunder. Yes, um, true, true. Yeah, very classic. Um, all right, uh, most. Or I like the fresh, <laughs> fresh on the oh. uh, <laughs> Basquiat song. That one's dope. Like the classic scratch tools, fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Where's that from originally? Um, Stomp La Beat. What's it called? Um. It's like a French hip hop song. Or it has two versions. One's in English and one's in French. Oh my god. And Basquiat was like the producer. Okay. Like Basquiat, Basquiat. Um oh, or wow. he was involved with it somehow. Man. 
I am like on fire right now. You're, God, school- so You're schooling us. I, I had no idea. Well, I mean, also, it looks like it's getting hot in the studio, too. I'm remembering the random details, but not things like the name of the song <laughs> or the artist. Right. You know, useful for, bits of info like that. For a time period, I thought Shazam, before I ever used it for the first time, someone had told me that you can just hum the song or sing the song into it, and it would spit it, give you the, the title. And I thought that uh, I, I'm a little sad we haven't reached that level yet because, you know, we should be able yeah, to yeah, just yeah. clap into our phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that works yet. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, two more. Okay, uh, you recently, or I guess, I guess it's been a year or two now. Uh, got married? Um, no, not yet. Coming up on the first anniversary. Co- coming up on the first. Okay, a secret yeah. to secret to happy marriage. Um, secret to the happy marriage. Um, your wife's always right. Good one, Cla- a classic. <laughs> a classic. Well, so right. No, what yeah, no. That's... I say, I mean, it's true. Don't go to bed angry. Um, I definitely never go to bed angry. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, just be there for each other. You know. Love it. You got yeah. deep cuts for us, and you got relationship advice. Uh, and the final question is: What's the most surprising slash like underrated or unexpected show you've ever played? Like where, what was the setting? Um, oh man, that's tough. Cause I'm just, I'm going to be trying not to think about shows these days. So I just don't want to, um, uh, bring up all those fond memories. Yeah. It's just like, what's the point of thinking too much about it? If you know, you can't do it. Um, I think just off the top of my head, one one that surprised me, and it was a long time ago, and I'd like to go back, but El Paso was really fun. Wow. Um, you know, there's always there's occasionally ones that are really off the beaten beaten path that mm-hmm. surprise you. Yeah. Love it. That's uh, not an answer anyone would have expected. Uh, you've been around the world, and so that's that's cool. I'm gonna have to make it there one day. Um, all right. Well, I, I won't keep you, so let's um, let's get into these demos real quick. Let me cue this up. I don't know if you've got it there. Um, let's do the Euphony one first. All right, so this is, I'm just gonna pull it up on iTunes real quick. All right. Oh, let me get headphones, yeah. Or I can. Yeah, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. This is you. Euf- one ear on. Euphony with uh, the only thing I want. This works. Uh oh, I screwed this up. One second.
featuring Julian with the only thing I want. Pete, what'd you th what'd you think? Oh, you're 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 muted. Um, I oh, know you're good to go. We can hear you now. I was uh, so I started a couple seconds behind. Oh me. yeah, sorry. Um, but uh, no, that was good, man. I like that. I think um, the only thing I was thinking towards the end is it kind of starts as this chill kind of loungy thing, mm -hmm. and then it has kind of a big drop, and um, it's hard for me to tell without listening to more of this producer stuff. Mm -hmm. um, not that, I mean, I'm the last person to say that you need to be one or the other, like you need to be big room or you could be, you know, chill, but you can't be both. Um, but it feels to me like um, that part in the middle almost feels like a remix of the song mm. where like maybe there should be even like two versions, one that's yep. more loungy and then another one that's more clubby. Um, and so then you don't have to, um, uh, or maybe not, I don't know, man, but I felt like if it is to be, um, more clubby then the drums are, uh, need to be more crisp. Mm -hmm. Um, cause there's not as a lot, I feel like there should be a little more treble and kind of punchiness mm -hmm. in the hats and the, and the snare, especially, um, but uh, so I guess I would just like kind of work on that and try and reconcile those things with each other. But it's really nice. I don't think it needs that much. And I, I, I'd hate for them to try and, you know, uh, do too much with it because I think it is in a, in a good place. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, I really like this. Um, and I agree with you that the two different mixes came to mind a little bit i like that it developed into that second spot but then it it does take us away from where you know going back to like the setting for for music like you know the bar gigs that you used to do I, I used to do those as well and it's uh for the first half definitely fits over there or like opening or summer patio and you can you can play it there and then it becomes this other thing where it's like uh, a bit more clubby and if it were over there then yes the drums could toughen up maybe the bass could toughen up and almost like almost prog prog it out a bit like with you know more of a sweep sweeping base to, if you were to develop it in that way so i think it depends on one musically and everything where the vocal is i like all of that uh yeah. it's just a, a question of do you want to have those two different versions or how do you sort of reconcile those two ideas because it gets m much busier at the end which I, I i think those ideas are cool but uh maybe work uh, in a more focused, like if that's a six, like a five, six minute club night version or something, but cool track. Thanks. You find Yeah. Yeah. I like that. You can kind of, you hear the beginning and you're like, Oh, this is sort of like very French house influenced, mm -hmm. really cool little bass line. And then if you drop the needle in the middle, you'd be like, Oh, this almost sounds like it could be an inch in a deep thing or something. Mm -hmm. Um, or at least, if not that, then, you know, it's not far off. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's cool. It's different. I like it. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, I know you got to run. So let's just uh, do the one more, uh, here. We've got wake the wild, uh, with LMK. Here we go. What are you thinking, baby? I need your love tonight. Crashing lately So let's lock in tonight Oh yeah Fill the space between We create the fear I've been gone too long Can't we write this wrong Let's just leave today Spend the night 
was uh, Wake the Wild. New submission this week. Solid. Yeah. Solid. I like it. I could see um, Nick and Kona from uh, my band, the uh, singers I work with, I could see them really liking this one. Um, I I dig it. You know, there's one little thing I heard. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, right between when he says, come on, there's like a real harsh something like a um i don't know what it is but some sort of edit um oh was there that, what uh, section was that i missed it in the chorus oh, okay. in the hook yeah like right at the end of the hook there's like a um it just sounds like uh something that needs to be edited i don't know maybe it's a, a like a vocal um, thing or a, or in the beat a vocal thing oh, okay yeah 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 um but uh because I'm in, my ears are in fine tune mode right now. I'm right. Trying to when I finish up tracks, I just listen for like the most minute kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I feel you. I did, I, did, I missed that. Um, what is there other than that? Is there any anything constructively that you would look at maybe tweaking or changing or? Um. Oh man, I think it's. I think it's good. Yeah, nice. I'm, I'm, I think it's. I think it sounds. It's a solid idea, and it. it I think it works for me. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I. I, I uh, those. I, I. I love the chords. I think. Sure. Um, as you listen, the first time the hook came around, I was like, does this need to be a little, that's, that's one, probably the first thing that I would consider. And I don't know if it's, maybe it's a personal choice or the dog is like dreaming and twitching. Um, I wonder if there'd be a, a really subtle way to make the chorus is a little bit bigger so it doesn't feel um, the same. So like, it's not a lot, maybe one element, maybe like a small, like a funk stab, like bah, bah, like opening, like almost on it, like a Juno. That's that's one obvious way, or even just to get a little bit more highs with like another 
Um, layer the clap layer. or get like a, yeah. a yeah, 16th little. note with hi hat right. loop with a lot of swing on it. Mm. Um, right. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, I think there's little touches like little. that that's probably would take it to the next level where you really make the chorus pop a little more without like exactly. you don't need to open up all the filters mm. or like whatever to to do that. Um, but. That's a good point. It's it, that's a tough line. Maybe leveling to, out. There's sense of a couple of things where the levels were not totally. Um, that just could use a little massaging, maybe a little more compression. Right. But it's really close. Yeah, it's yeah. I I agree. There was uh, I like that little touch, and it's almost an afterthought because you don't hear it until a couple minutes in with the vocoder layer. Uh, not even in the post. It's not the rap bit. It I think comes in second verse, and we hear it a couple times. And I would wonder about teasing. Maybe I'm I'm thinking just like pretty poppy format, but be like, okay, that was kind of cool. I almost want to hear a little bit more of that. But yeah, I think these are really small um, adjustments that are a lot of it is a little bit of taste, but musically it's and and the arrangement's cool and the vocals are, are sit really nicely um, with, mm -hmm. this, with this track. Um, cool. Well, I'm glad you liked uh, the demos <laughs> that we were able to, to yeah, man, to do. Yeah, sorry, I got to run. Sorry, I I wasn't sure. Um, I didn't realize when you sent all of them. I'm like, oh man, I'm just I don't have time to get to it today. I, but I, I um, feel you're finishing the new. Pass them off on the next guest. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to them actually right after this and finish the rest. Oh, cool. The rest off. Okay. But um, but yeah, but thank you for hanging out, making time. You know, in the busy schedule to hang out and it's uh nice to to see you even you know on the chats <laughs> you too man uh, beard looks great oh thank you yeah the sun <laughs> all that la sun you know it yeah, promotes man. the growth um yeah so i guess uh you know go for every for all the listeners go and check out the the new remix record of uh, bimini road and bimini road itself and go follow is it moon boots on all or moon boots music on all platforms moon boots music yeah yeah amazing um well dude i hope to see you soon uh who knows but uh if not um you know well, we'll as soon as we can you know i mean yeah i don't know god knows when i'll be going to california again but fingers crossed we'll do the karaoke next time yeah okay sounds good man all right well uh yeah have a great weekend and um stay safe out there and i'm looking forward to hearing the new music Thanks, man. All right, I'll send it over. All right. Thanks, Pete. Okay, cool. See you soon. Nice chat, man. Peace. Peace.